Thank you. The next item of business is an urgent question, and I call Michelle Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to support those affected by the decision of Petro Ineos to close its refinery. Cabinet Secretary Neil Gray. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank uh, Michelle Thompson for giving me this opportunity to update Parliament. Uh, firstly, I would like to recognise that this is a very worrying time uh, for the workers at Grangemouth and assure them of my personal uh, and this Government's commitment to work to ensure they receive the appropriate support. Uh, having spoken to refinery senior managers with the First Minister this morning, it is my understanding that this is not a decision uh, at this point uh, to close the refinery, but to start the necessary preparations to have the potential to transition Grangemouth to an import terminal. Uh, we will continue to engage proactively with all stakeholders as this develops. The management were also clear that this is a commercial decision uh, taken due to global factors and not a decision to take in, that has been taken because of anything that this government or indeed the UK government uh, has done and indeed that they are supportive of our 2045 targets. I have also met this morning with both Unite the Union and the STUC to express our full support for staff at Grangemouth and ensure that we are doing all we can to ensure a sustainable future for uh, the refinery. We have a shared commitment to insisting that a just transition for workers is at the heart of any future decision, and I will continue to engage with unions and restate that my door is always open to constructive dialogue to support the future of workers and the site more generally. Uh, finally, President Officer, I have also uh, written today to the Secretary of State for Energy Security and Net Zero to outline my concerns regarding this announcement and ask for an urgent meeting to discuss how we can work together to support those affected by the decision, uh, and will be seeking assurances around fuel security. Uh, thank you. I would just um, advise that uh, I will allow a wee bit of extra time for this, uh, but uh, we have a number of members who are seeking a supplementary, and therefore I would ask for the questions to be brief and the answers as well, if possible. Uh, supplementary, Michelle Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I quite agree, Cabinet Secretary, our immediate thoughts must go to those affected by the decision, regardless of outcome, who are now fearful for their jobs as it moves from a refinery facility to potentially an import facility. The impact will indeed be felt by those directly in the refinery, but also potentially by small businesses and the wider supply chain around Grangemouth. Grangemouth already struggles with high levels of so social deprivation, and the ultimate closure potentially will be felt acutely in the town. So what assessment has the Scottish Government made of the wider impact of this change on the SME sector, supply chains and Scottish GDP, and what discussions has the Cabinet Secretary had with trade unions and management of the refinery that he can give uh, additional information? And finally, will the Scottish Government work with me as a constituency MSP to set up a task force to support those who could be affected? Cabinet Secretary. An officer, uh, we absolutely recognise um, the uncertainty uh, the anxiety, uh, the feeling of despair that this announcement will place on a range of people and workers uh, associated with Grangemouth. And I give my assurance to work collaboratively with all partners to ensure that any impact of this and uh, subsequent decisions are mitigated as far as we possibly can. It is uh, important to note that Grangemouth remains an important asset in Scotland's energy future, and as such, we have committed to publishing a just transition plan for Grangemouth in the spring. Uh, work on this is well underway, and we have engaged with business, the local community, uh, wider stakeholders, and will continue to do so over the coming weeks and months. Uh, this morning, as I set out, I met with the trade unions, assured them of my support, uh, that this government is committed to securing jobs at, at uh, the Grangemouth site, uh, and I agree with them that we must succeed in securing a just transition for workers and will work with the unions, uh, MSP colleagues, workers and wider stakeholders to ensure a sustainable future for the refinery uh, and support those who may be affected by Michelle this announcement. Thompson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In its discussions thus far with Petro Ineos and the UK Government, which of course has reserved responsibility for fuel security, what assurances has the Scottish Government been given regarding this and have they asked the UK Government to conduct a risk assessment to test any assurances? Furthermore, the potential for any sustainable future for the site and not just importing fuel can only be at a very early stage. So what further steps does the Scottish Government anticipate taking to move the site from the potential for a just transition to an actual just transition, be it in sustainable aviation fuel, hydrogen 
And will the Cabinet Secretary commit to keeping members updated on any progress? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. Um, through the refineries' maintenance periods, uh, Grangemouth imports fuel from other markets, and as such, the site already has the ability to operate as an import. Terminal. My understanding is that this announcement is the preparatory work to enable this at a greater scale. So, following uh, our meeting with Petronius this morning, I wrote to the Petronius Trading uh, Chief Executive to seek assurances from him that the business will uh, ensure the Grangemouth role as a source of domestic road and air fuels will continue for years to come, along with other uh, asks. And my officials remain in regular dialogue with the UK Government, and I have written today to the Secretary of State to ask for an urgent meeting, given the reserve. Uh, areas of responsibilities of the UK Government. I have been clear in the letter that it remains my firm preference that the refinery should continue operating for as long as possible, and we will continue to engage proactively with Pretorinius uh, as we develop our Just Transition Plan for Grangemouth. And I will obviously uh, give uh, the commitment to keep uh, all members updated on this as it progresses. Thank you. Uh, obviously, there is a, 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 a considerable degree of interest in, in uh, putting a question, and I will seek to take as many members as I possibly can, but I would need the cooperation, please, to have succinct questions and answers. And with that, I call Stephen Kerr to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you. The Secretary of State for Energy Security and Next Euro, I believe, has spoken by phone with the Chief Executive of Petro Ineos. I note that the Cabinet Secretary says he has written to the Chief Executive. Will he undertake to meet the Chief Executive? Would he also undertake to press for a meeting with the, the Secretary of State? Uh, because it is very, very important, as we have learned from experience in 2016, that both of Scotland's governments work very closely together in relation to this matter. I think that is what the people of Grangemouth would expect at very least. Will he undertake to give assurances that he will have those meetings and that everything will be done cooperatively in order to do what is right for the people of Grangemouth? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, and I thank uh, Stephen Kerr for those questions. I have given confirmation in my initial answers to Michelle Thompson on both, but just to have absolute clarity, uh, yes, um, the, meeting, the offer of a meeting actually came from Petronius in their initial correspondence to me. I have since responded saying I absolutely would uh, like that meeting to take place in very short order. Uh, I have also written to the Secretary of State uh, today uh, asking for such a meeting in a collaborative space to look at what we can do together uh, to look at all potential options to extend uh, the potential life of the refinery, although understanding the challenges that exist for that to be achieved. It is uh, a very challenging situation that has been outlined, uh, but we will endeavour, obviously, working with Petronius, the UK Government, uh, trade unions and other partners to ensure that we can do everything possible uh, to try to make sure that there is a longer period for this refinery, but also a more sustainable future for the wider Grangemouth site. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Gillian Mackay. Ms Bailey. Presiding officer, hundreds of families across central Scotland will be anxious today after the announcement of the proposed closure of the refinery. For years, Grangemouth has been synonymous with Scottish industry and it is strategically important for Scotland and indeed the whole of the UK and plays an important role in providing fuel security. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, when was he first told this devastating news? Can he detail the Scottish Government's prior work with Petro Ineos on net zero transition and when it started, and what plans are in place to secure jobs and the future of Grangemouth. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you very much. I thank Jackie Bailey for our questions. And as she would expect, uh, we have been aware for some time that the business has been considering its future transition options, and we have been working with them uh, as, as part of that. Like all refineries across the UK and indeed across Europe, uh, Grangemouth uh, will have been uh, considering a range of commercial factors as part of that, with the wider uh, geopolitical uh, and uh, uh, economic situations uh, around the world. Uh, we were notified by the business on the morning of Tuesday, the 21st of November, uh, of Petra and S's specific plans, as announced in the media yesterday, at the same time uh, as the workforce were to commence preparatory work for construction of the import terminal at Grangemouth and uh, Finna. Um, obviously, you know, this has been uh, with a, a refinery over 100 years old, this has been something that has been a, a potential on the horizon for some time, which is why some of the work that we have been setting out, such as looking at a, bio, uh, a biofuel refinery, looking at the opportunity for the wider site to be part of the carbon capture cluster, looking at the opportunity around the development and usage of hydrogen, amongst other things, has been part of the work that we have been doing. Uh, I have got an opportunity, I hope, 
hope for colleagues across the Chamber tomorrow afternoon uh, to discuss some of that in, in greater detail and obviously be happy to uh, share details of that with colleagues who would request it in writing. Thank you. I call Gillian Mackay to be followed by Willie Rennie. Ms Mackay. Thanks, Deputy Presiding Officer. I have met with unions and have spoken to residents, and they are rightly concerned about what yesterday's sudden announcement means for Grangemouth. And I'm, my thoughts, and I am sure those of many across the Chamber, will be with those affected. The lack of information is causing concern amongst the community, and I believe an urgent summit is required to provide certainty about what comes next. Will the Cabinet Secretary consider convening this, and will he meet workers with me at the site? Thank you very much. I've, uh, as I set out in my initial response to, uh, to Michelle Thompson, I met with uh, Unite the Union and the STUC and have com given a commitment to continue engagement uh, with the trade union representatives uh, going forward, not least to discuss what options and ideas they feel may, they may have uh, going forward for the wider Grangemouth site and indeed the refinery uh, itself. I have obviously got the opportunity for uh, Gillian Mackay uh, tomorrow afternoon to discuss some of those uh, ideas. Of course, uh, I am more than open uh, to considering uh, the opportunities that may arise from uh, such a summit uh, and uh, whether or not uh, meeting uh, workers directly at the site with her uh, and how that might help to assuage some concerns but also answer some questions that they may have. I call Willie Rennie to be followed by Ash Regan. If I heard the Minister correctly, he's saying that this might not be the end for the refinery in 2025, that life could be extended. Can he set out what factors might be considered in extending the life and what support is being offered by the government to make that happen? Cabinet Secretary. It is not a hard and fast decision. It is a, a, a decision that needs to be, a final decision still has to be taken. Uh, I do not want to set unrealistic expectations that this is not an incredibly challenging situation, uh, given the age of the refinery, its efficient, relative efficiency, but also uh, the global factors that are at play, the energy costs that they uh, face, as well as the, the fuel costs uh, that are, they are then uh, putting out. So the margins uh, are becoming incredibly challenging. Uh, I'm, uh, looking at everything that I can possibly do within the resources that we have, looking to work with UK colleagues. The ideas that we have already set out, uh, that I set out in response to Jackie Bailey's question around the, uh, such as uh, carbon capture, hydrogen, a biofuel uh, refinery, to try to make sure that the wider Grangemouth site continues to be uh, at the heart of industrial activity. Those are areas we will continue to look at and continue to provide as much support as we can. I call Ash Regan to be followed by Douglas Lumsden. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Last year, Scotland's North Sea sent over £9 billion in revenues to the UK Treasury. Yet, it looks like we are heading towards Grangemouth no more. The refinery is obviously of strategic national importance, and the Scottish Government intervened decisively twice before to help save the plant in 2008 and in 2013. So what are the prospects for doing so again? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, we're looking at everything that we possibly can do in order to ensure that there is continued industrial activity at the Grangemouth uh, site. I think it's important, though, to uh, not be uh, too alarmist in the narrative that we're putting forward here. Uh, this is uh, about the refinery. This is not about the wider Grangemouth uh, site and the wider businesses and operations uh, that are based there. Obviously, the Grangemouth refinery is incredibly important strategically and as an economic uh, asset. Uh, so we'll continue to look at all we can do, uh, given the answers I have already given elsewhere, uh, it, alongside uh, colleagues in the trade union movement, with Petronios, with the UK Government, uh, around whether there is anything to extend the life of the refinery, but I cannot underline enough the challenges that are currently being faced. I call Douglas Lumsden to be followed by Richard Leonard. Uh, President officer, the news from Grangemouth is a hammer blow to the industry and the local economy. This devolved government has set out to demonise oil and gas industry at every opportunity. They, along with Labour, are against new production in the North Sea and would prefer we rely on imports. The SNP have accepted the Greens into government who want to shut down the oil and gas industry. And the First Minister said two months ago he wanted to end Scotland's role as the oil and gas capital of Europe. Does the Cabinet Secretary now accept that the message the government is sending out 
is putting thousands of jobs at risk, including those at Grangemouth. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, on, on, I'm, I'm very sorry that Douglas Thompson has chosen uh, to take that particular tone, because that's not where uh, others uh, have been. And in fact, Petronios said themselves that this uh, had nothing to do with decisions that have been taken either by the Scottish Government or indeed uh, by uh, the UK Government. This is about global factors. This is about uh, the situation uh, facing not just refineries uh, here in the UK, but around uh, Europe. Uh, and unfortunately, the narrative that Douglas Lumsden has attempted to set out is entirely unhelpful and does nothing to help the workers uh, that are currently affected. And I call Richard Leonard. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I remind members of my voluntary register of interest? Does the Cabinet Secretary stand by his statement that the closure of the Petro Ineos oil refinery at Grangemouth would be a commercial decision which will future proof the site? Or does he agree with me that it is a strategic national asset, that these are strategic national manufacturing jobs, that this is about a strategic national energy supply whose future should not be determined by billionaire absentee owners? Cabinet Secretary. I, I have engaged uh, constructively with the trade, union, uh, trade unions that are directly involved in site the, uni the union as well as the STUC, um, and there is a shared understanding of the need to ensure that there is a just transition that happens, not just uh, at the refinery, but also at the wider uh, Grangemouth uh, site. Obviously, I hope that Richard Leonard uh, is able to attend the discussion that we can have uh, tomorrow to set out in more detail some of this work. Um, but I, I agree with him that, this is, that Grangemouth, uh, not just the the refinery, but the wider site is obviously of uh, strategic importance. However, it is privately owned by a joint venture of Ineos and PetroChina. Uh, they have commercial decisions to take. We are obviously looking to try to do what we can to support those decisions going forward. Uh, however, resources that we have, and indeed that the UK Government have, uh, need to be considered as part of that. But we will work with the trade union movement, with uh, the joint venture partners, uh, and uh, indeed the UK Government, to look at all we can do to extend the life of the refinery. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the urgent question, and I thank members for their cooperation in that I was able to take every member who had sought to ask a supplementary. There will be a short pause before we move on to the next item of business. Thank you.